Hello and welcome to my F124 driver career mode here today for part 10 and round 2 of our Formula 1 season here at Suzuka in Japan. We come off the back of the Australian Grand Prix where we got points on our Formula 1 debut. So we're looking to continue that coming into this weekend. We're on to our final run in qualifying now. We've found 84 attempts on our first lap time as we come around the final chicane and up to the line and it's right, going to put us, us to P9 with this go to the race. We come to you today live from the Mai Prefecture in the south of Japan's Honshu Island for a race that has seen so many title deciders through the years, some simple, some controversial, but all contributing to a legacy that makes the Japanese Grand Prix an indispensable stop in any Formula One season. Before we begin, let's take a quick look at the grid lineup for today's race. Max Verstappen put in a fantastic lap yesterday and he'll start from pole position. And it's Fernando Alonso alongside. Considering the rest of the grid we have, Hamilton, Leclerc, Sainz, Norris, Russell, Joe, Brown, Albert, Bottas, Gasly, Sonoda, Oscar Piastri, Ocon, Magnussen, Stroll, Hulkenberg, Ricardo, and Sergio Perez completes our grid. Now it lights out just moments away. It's time to go down to the track. Well, we welcome you to the broadcast. It's going to be some race today. First of all, introductions. I'm Alex Jakes. Alongside me for this one, Anthony Davidson. Paddock chat earlier in the weekend that this driver had discussions with another team this week. How does that work from a driver's point of view? Now, the, the, the good thing is for the driver that if you've potentially signed or had chats with a team that are going to further your career, that's all well and good. But the problem it immediately creates within your own team now is that potentially the team stop giving you inside information and therefore you're not privy to that knowledge of where the car's going in terms of its future development. So I guess the secret's out then as we sit here on the grid. You may have seen at the end of the last video we did have talks with McLaren after just one race in Formula 1. They clearly see something in us. I more did that to see how it worked, the new mechanic. We're going to stay loyal with Williams. Tatable found us to drive so I think it's only fair that we do that. So to the weekend we're going to be starting on the mediums, going to the hards and this is the formation lap. The formation lap gets underway then, and it's going to be interesting today to see how the dry conditions could affect the lifespan of the tyres. So as all the cars take their positions on the grid, the teams will be hoping their strategies pay off for them in today's race. But the question I'm asking is which teams have got it right and which teams have got it horribly wrong. Right. So here we go then, it's time for the five red lights in the Japanese Grand Prix. And we're racing in Japan, we've got a good start, we're going to go to the outside of George Russell. We've gained a couple of places and also has Ferrari who's on the inside. They're going to go down, but we've been caught out by George Russell. We've gone Tokyo drifting around the outside of turn one, miles off the track. We've lost many, many positions after the good start. And the run down to turn one, we've fallen all the way back to 14 for when they look right behind Yuki Sonoda. It's been a horrible start to this Grand Prix. We tried to go down the inside of Sonoda. Now as we get up towards the happen, we're going to go for a big lunge down the inside of Sonoda. We've nearly also got our teammate there as well. We're up there into P14. And it has been a shocker of the start for us as we roll out over the back now of Alex. We run off the track a bit. It's 
We go through speed and up towards 150 RBI. We take a big bit of curb there in the process as well. And Sonoda going to have a go back half into 130 I think it's a little bit too far back. But it's all gone wrong on the opening lap. This is the replay now of George Russell start. He had a poor initial getaway, a good second phase. Look at the Ferrari, the Ferrari hasn't. And then just got, he just got on top of the curb and understeered. And I just saw that in the corner of my eye. That's what caught me out. So we had to take a short action. It's very dramatic in the replay. But in the moment, you can see, see more from the onboard of Carlos side. There was very near the contact we had to, we had to turn out of turn one, but it's ruined our race before it's even really started after that good start. As it's a Joe Gasly, pretty much at the front of this big DRS train going at it. Gasly's ahead of, Joe's ahead of Gasly, and now we're all over the back of Albon, who once again told to race him like we were back in Australia so we're not messing about we're going for it down the inside job done at the hairpin and next up is Oscar Piastri he's down at the back here because of a penalty also Sergio Perez is down at the back as well as now this is Gasly coming back at Joe round the outside of turn one is Joe going to keep it pinned down the inside? He is. Then outside by side. I think Joe's just got his nose ahead. Round the outside as they go through this gear section. It's a great battle. But Gasly is finally ahead of the Sauber. As we head into sector two. Now we're on the back of Piastri here with... Here with Oh, wow, down the inside, it was a great move on Piastri, and now we're going to win with, with the, uh, the Al Alpine of Esteban Ocon, who have done round the outside, two cars on one lap, we have a big tank slap, we had good pace in this race, but we just couldn't find a way through, it was a big, big DRS train, um, it's now, there's Joe going back past Gasly, the Alpine of Ocon's up the inside of us, the side by side of Ockham, we went side by side through. In 30 yeah, but we've stayed ahead of the Frenchman. Now can we get after Joe and Gasly? It's been very frustrating getting our way through this DRS train, but it seems to start working now. As this is Piastri getting past Esteban Ockham into Town 1. That McLaren shouldn't be in this fight, it's much quicker than that. And now we're on the back of Gasly going into the hairpin. We're going to go for a lunge to the outside, try and straighten up the corner. Now we're going to get a good exit to try and get Gasly here going towards Spain. All over the back of him, I think about it, the inside, but we're too far back to do anything there. It's become free spin now, and up towards 130 yards. Piastri looks getting closer, is he getting closer? Gas is going to the inside of Joe, he's too far back. Lap 12 of this race now, we come to the end of, as we go into the chicane. Once again then, and we are going to peel off and into the pits at the end of lap 12, try and do the undercut on Gasly and Joe, because we've got good pace in this race. And it's really showing what could have been if we hadn't have done what we did at time one. But it's slow, it's a slow pit stop. It's a really, really slow pit stop on the right rear. That's cost us big time. It's another big issue in this race. We've dropped back behind Zenoda, we've dropped back behind Ocon as well, who we were miles in front of. And we're back to square one pretty much just like it was after lap one in this race this is a replay of the pit stop you can see that left that rear right didn't want to come off and well i guess we go again now as well. next lap this is all the cars behind us pitting coming out of their stops and there we are going around the outside of our boy and perez we've got perez as well there that was critical that we did that but we dropped back 
to four teams, so we're quite literally is back to square one. We were right on the verge of points before the stops. But now we're not messing about, we know we've got the base to get past these. So let's just go for it, try and look after the tyres in the process of course as well. But we're not holding back now, it is all in to try and get a point in this race. We've got Sonoda fairly easily there as we go into Spoon. Now we're on the back of Piastri who is next up on the list. Paris in the red woods, the best car on the grid really isn't doing anything in this race but if we're able to flow through but this DRS train is very hard to get through as we go down the inside of Piastri copy and paste move what we did earlier on in the Grand Prix and you can see how bunched up everyone is behind Joe and Gasly we're on the back now of Esteban Ocon we're going to send it down the inside of Ocon into the hairpin catching nothing it's no attraction race who's going to get the better attraction we have just but the second phase Ocon is side by side with us it's neck and neck but the Astro is going to look for a way through here but we haven't we've had to back out but we've run wide and up the inside goes the Astro from Patrick's got here as we try and get the exit the Astro has overtaken us we've tried to gain one and lost one and we may gain another one you may lose another one to see the Yuki Sonoda on the inside of 132 and back to it. He doesn't want to be going side by side through there because we went backing out. But we've tried to gain one on this lap and we've ended up losing one in the process. As Gasly and Joe are starting to break away a bit now and Gasly re overtakes Joe into turn one. This has been a great race long battle between the Alpine and the Sauber but now lap 17 we've managed to get back on the back of Piastri and we send it down the inside and hopefully now that is third time lucky to keep Piastri in the mirrors now we can get back after Esteban Ocon as there's Joy really overtaking Gasly once again as we head towards the chicane now we're on the back of Ocon as Joe's going back at Gasly it's now we've caught Ocon Nathan who's really had to break heavily he's been tucked up behind his teammate coming out of turn one we've caught Ocon Nathan we're back to where we were before the stops lap 19 now this is Gasly going back at Joe this is a great power they're side by side Gasly on the inside they're side by side Gasly looks like he's got a job done now we're looking for an exit to try and get through we're right on the inside as we head through the S section Gas is not giving up, Joe's not giving up, we're going to look for a way through, we've got great traction, round the outside, Joe's got the job done in Gasly, and so have we, round the outside, it's a great move on Gasly, now, can we get after Joe, can we overtake Joe, and finally, be set free, of this DRS train as we head down towards turn one we're gonna look to the outside we're gonna sail around the outside of him at turn one and that is going to put us into P9 we're into the points as well with that overtake as well as the overtake on Gasly now we've got good pace can we get after Valtteri Bottas break away from this DRS train Lap 24, we were just keeping Joe at bay, but he was just inside the DRS, we couldn't quite break it, but I'd rather be at the front of the DRS train than okay, two and three times deep eight, in it. Three I thought we could catch um, Bottas, it didn't seem to be in the end. There's now one going on to the, the final lap, we're overtaken by Joe, but we're going to go back down the inside of him at turn two to keep P9 is side by side with us we're going to sail around the outside we keep Joe behind and now one more lap to just defend it but this man Max Verstappen no problems once again he got denied on the line back in Australia but there's no one near him to be able to do that today Max Verstappen wins the Japanese Grand Prix Fernando Alonso's P2 then it's the two Mercedes who are also racing to the line George Russell this time doesn't get the car is racing on the line Hamilton's on the podium Bottas 
there he is, here we were hunting down, but coming into the, the chicane for the final time, here we come, it's going to be back to back points, in Formula 1, it's a P9 here in Japan, what a race that was. Okay, pick up rubber and bring it home. They've done it then, here at Suzuka, a brilliant win on the beloved figure of eight circuit. A great display of dominance today by this driver. They led from lights out to the flag at the end, led every lap of the race. Brilliant stuff by them and uh, excited to see what more they can do in future races. Red Bull are our winners today after showcasing some incredible driving. It's been a huge push from them lately to stay competitive with the other teams and they're certainly proving themselves. So that's been the Japanese Grand Prix then won by Max Verstappen fairly comfortably in the end for him after being beaten on the line back in Australia. Good result as well for Aston Martin, Fernando Alonso converting his P2 on the grid to a P2 in the race and Mercedes getting another podium as well with Lewis Hamilton P3 but for us though we finished P9 and it's a great recovery drive after what happened at Turn 1 and the pit stop as well it's still kind of a race of what could have been if we had have not been scared off the track pretty much at turn one by george russell george finishes that p4 so maybe we wouldn't we wouldn't have had the pace of the mercedes and the ferraris we would have gone backwards but i think we could at least have finished in front of bottas but we'll never know our teammate alex Albon finished down in 15th we've massively outperformed him again and you can see here the battle for p19 has been won on the line by Daniel Ricciardo so last time out it was the win was won on the line and this time out it's for P19 that's been won on the line Max Verstappen takes over the lead of Drivers World Championship by seven points over George Russell Fernando Alonso then moves up into P3 Lewis Hamilton at P4 Charles Leclerc rounded out the top five difficult weekend for Perez he just couldn't find his way through that DRS train same for Piastri as well he finds himself just behind us in fact we've jumped in in P11 Albon is 16th and there's still quite a few drivers still yet to score this season of course we've only had two races and there's still eight more to go this season in terms of the constructors then and Mercedes still lead the constructors but the gap to Red Bull is just three points and that's going to be a very interesting battle to watch this season and we are still top of those teams that haven't scored a point in P7 with Alpine, RB and Haas still yet to get on the board. So that's been then the Japanese Grand Prix for round two of the 2024 Formula One season. It's more points for us in Formula One. Everything's going right in our career so far, though it was very much a race of what could have been. We head back to Europe for Imola. We'll see what happens there. I'll see you then. Goodbye.